All right, and now I would love to do our speaker introductions. First of all, I'm thrilled to introduce, introduce Beth Ann DeHaan. Beth Ann is one of AOF's business advisors. She has an MBA from Northeastern University and has used her own experience as a successful business owner to counsel hundreds of small businesses in everything start from starting a business and growing it to sustaining a business through difficult times. I'm so excited to have you here, Beth Ann. Happy to be here working with you again, Brittany. Thank you. And next, um, we have Andrew Palin. Andrew joins us from our partner, Global Atlantic Financial Group. He is the business finance officer for the investment office and institutional business at Global Atlantic. With over 20 years of financial services industry experience, his career has included roles that focus on finance transformation initiatives, as well as fixed income products, life insurance products, and various technology implementations. So great to have you here, Andrew. Thanks, Brittany. Happy to be here and happy to uh, engage with this great group we've got. Wonderful. Okay, so that is it for me. So I'm going to jump into the good stuff. Andrew, I will turn it over to you to take it away. Perfect. Um, so we've got a handful of common financial challenges that small businesses face. Um, which we'll dive into during today's presentation. Just to orient on a couple of the key themes, we're going to focus on cash flow. So really um, tracking the money that comes into and out of a business each and every day, really understanding the liquidity of each of the businesses that each of you manage. We'll touch on a budget or lack thereof. Um, a budget's really the anchor point when it comes to finances. You know, it's early in the year still, but this should be something that many of you hopefully have already done. If not, you know, you've got the opportunity to hear a little bit more about it and apply that in your local business. But really, it, it's something that's going to track how much money you have, where you're spending that money, how much you'll need in the future. And ultimately, we want to ensure that it drives improved decision making um, on how you prioritize spending, or potentially you might alter your business plan based on what that budget's telling you. Um, next, we'll shift gears over to capital. So capital is simply the money or the financing that uh, your business is used to fund its operations. And it's really the lifeblood of any small business. So most important to, to address that here this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are. And then lastly, unexpected expenses. So this is really the what ifs. Um, so not only being thoughtful about what you know or what you can foresee happening, um, but also being thoughtful around what you don't know. Uh, and so we need to be proactive around planning for those events, uh, just like we do in our everyday lives, but also apply the same discipline here um, for your small business. And with that, I think we'll go to the next slide. So how do we tackle some of these challenges? So I think it's going to be a, a mixture of, of a couple of things. Um, most important is really having the, the right mindset. And so that's being engaged, you know, being proactive on how you use these tools, which Beth Ann is going to take uh, this group through here. Um, you know, these are actionable steps that each of you can use to, to measure your business, to improve your business's performance. Uh, and everything's really within your control. Uh, there's a lot of resources that we'll share with you that you're able to um, hopefully take advantage of. And you'll find what, what works best for you uh, and apply that to your individual business's needs. And really, it's also a learning process, too. So um, hopefully there's an opportunity to sort of adjust, you know, depending on the tools that you utilize and, and make modifications along the way. So just like uh, any opportunity, uh, there's sort of a general approach, which might be something that resonates with each one of you. But then it needs to be customized a little bit. So it's most helpful to you and your business. Thank you so much for that, Andrew. And I think you hit the nail on the head that there is a lot of resources and you can start where you're at. And so hopefully a lot of these tips and skills that we'll go through today will really help you take your business to the next level. Beth Ann, I'd love to kick it to you to talk about cash flow. Thank you so much. And thanks for that great introduction, Andrew. Um, you really hit on some key points. Um, now we're going to get into the nitty gritty here um, on some of the things that you can do to really make sure that your financial house is in order. Um, and I will say, as Brittany mentioned before, I um, am 
an entrepreneur myself. I've owned several businesses, small businesses here in Massachusetts. And um, so when I talk about these different things, I'm speaking from experience and I'm giving you best practices, but also telling you what not to do because, you know, I've, I've lived it uh, in running my small businesses. So um, I, I have some hopefully credibility um, when, when it comes to some of these things. So the first thing we want to touch on is cash flow. Um, cash flow best practices. Um, and I can't emphasize enough how important this is. And I can speak from experience that this is something that a lot of small businesses don't realize, you know, the importance of because you you look at your revenues, you might be making lots and lots of sales, the revenue is coming in. But if you're not actually getting the cash in your bank account to, in order to pay your bills, then it's not doing you much good. So um, cash flow is just super important. So a couple things that you can do, you know, to really manage your your cash flow in the best way. Um, first is managing your accounts receivables. So that's basically, you know, people paying you. So a lot of people, you know, if you're running a, um, a brick and mortar business and people are paying you cash for goods right away, that's one thing. But if you're a service oriented business or you are a business where you get paid, you know, after the fact, it can take a while for money to, to start rolling in. And so you need to make sure that you are invoicing right away. Don't wait till the end of the month um, you know, to send out your invoices. If you, if you um, sell something or if you sell service, go ahead and get that invoice out right away um, so that, that that payment can come in. Um, the next thing you want to think about is managing your inventory. So if you are a retail organization or an online seller, I have a lot of clients that have online um, retail businesses, um, you want to make sure that your inventory is managed properly. So if you have goods that are, are just aren't moving, um, either go ahead and discount them, get the, move them out. Um, think about seasonal um, inventory, what goods you know are, are selling at different times of years. You really want to keep a really good eye on your inventory and make sure you don't have things sitting around that aren't selling. Um, the next tip is to um, potentially lease equipment instead of buying it. So in the long run, buying equipment can be cheaper, but leasing can be a better short-term solution when you are just starting out. So something to think about. Um, the other thing is to borrow money before you need it. A lot of businesses wait until they're in sort of desperate straits, um, you know, to, to get sort of the, the extra capital that they might need. This isn't always the, the, the best way to do it. You want to borrow money, um, you know, when you don't necessarily uh, need it the most. You want to anticipate what cash um um, needs that you might have. Um, and then finally, just, you know, running weekly cash flow statements, seeing where you are, seeing what, you know, um, where things stand as far as your cash. Um, I can speak from experience with both small businesses that I've started. We, we really needed twice the amount of cash that we thought we did in order to sort of get through those crucial um, especially first months um, in in business. Uh, Andrew, I'd, I'd love to hear if you have any thoughts on the whole cash flow um, question. Sure. Yeah, I'll build off a little bit on where you ended, Beth Ann. Um, and I think the way that I generally think of of sort of cash flow, there's probably two main buckets. Um, one would be around operations, right? So that's really the core flow of money in and out um, from the production or sale of your products and services. And then also the financing side of it. So that's where when we talk about borrowing, um, any sort of debt or borrowings that are part of your financials, um, having visibility to those dollars coming in and out. Again, I think depending on where you are in your business's life cycle, you know, positive is always great. If it's negative, that's not the worst thing. If it's still early stages and you've made a decision to invest in certain parts of your business, but ultimately you want to see those turn positive over time. So really the visibility to, to tracking that is most important uh, and just you know having that discipline around uh, the point of running weekly statements, really keeping visible those numbers to those dollars as they move in and out of your of your company. Absolutely. Great, great points. 
All right, we can move on to budgeting, budgeting 101. So as Andrew uh, mentioned in his introduction, um, we can't overemphasize the importance of setting a budget for your business. This is just as important, you know, in your personal life, you know, you might have a household budget. Um, budgets are just so important to keep you on track. So, you know, you want to analyze your costs. So you have, you know, fixed costs, which are things like rent, um, and, um, you know, utility payments, that sort of thing. Some certainly employee salaries, if you have salaried employees, those are going to be your fixed costs. And then you've got all your variable costs. And these, you know, are what you really need to keep an eye on. These might be raw materials. These might be, um, you know, part-time employee costs. Uh, those are going to vary from month to month or from season to season. So make sure you have a firm understanding of what your costs are from, from month to month. Um, projecting cash flow. Again, we just talked about all the different ways that you can um, manage your cash flow. That's super important when you're budgeting. Um, estimate your revenue. So this is um, something that, um, you know, your the revenue is what you get from selling your goods or services. Um, and, you know, you, you really have to be um, sort of conservative on estimating these revenues. Uh, you never want to sort of overestimate what you think your 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 sales are going to be because you you just never know. So you always want to keep this on the you know, relatively conservative side. Um, know what your gross uh, profit margin is. So basically this is, um, you know, subtracting costs from revenues. These are your gross profit margins. You wanna make sure that you're in a good spot for your industry. And these are, you know, some of these um, numbers and statistics you can um, look at within your industry to know whether, you know, if you're in a, a food business or restaurant business, your, you know, your gross profits are going to be different than if you're in a retail business. So you want to make sure that your gross profit margins are in line with whatever industry that you are operating in. Um, factor in seasonality. So again, a lot of businesses are very seasonal. So I owned a wine uh, business. And so our big seasons were, you know, around the holidays uh, and things like that. So we, you know, saw huge bumps in revenue during holidays and, and you know, periods where people were, you know, drinking a lot of wine. Um, a lot of business have a lot of seasonality. So you want to make sure that your budget is going to reflect, um, you know, the, the, the fluctuations in revenues. Um, and then finally, it's really important to use um, good accounting software. And there are lots of good ones out there. QuickBooks is, you know, I would say one of the sort of gold standards of, of um, uh accounting software, but there are many others. Some of them are free. Things like Wave um, is a great one for very small businesses that don't have a lot of um, funds. You have FreshBooks, Zero. There, there are many. So, you know, it's always good to um, get the one that's right for your business. Um, Andrew, any anything you want to add to the budgeting piece? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I spend a considerable amount of time uh, budgeting uh, in my sort of day-to-day -day job. It, it's definitely tedious, but it's most helpful to really understand what your goals are, both short-term short, short -term and long-term. So really having that foundation, that financial plan is, is most important. And again, I think, you know, for some folks, it might be a little difficult to kind of wrap your head around everything that's going on to help set a budget. But I think the one thing to take comfort in is it's really an estimate based on what you know today. And you've got the ability to refine that as you learn more about the business and really understanding what drives the financials of your business. And so that's where a budget is helpful to have a starting point around some of the key factors that Beth Ann talked through. But it's really an opportunity for you to learn what sort of moves the needle. And then you can refine that budget as time goes on. Um, so definitely it's a, a super helpful a tool to learn more about your company, learn more about what drives it, learn more about what ultimately is going to deliver a bottom line that you're happy with. And just on the technology point, again, I think it's uh, it's easy to use, you know, some sort of offline spreadsheets, but really the emphasis on technology helps, number one, you be more efficient, and then also helps reduce the number of errors, right? So there's more accuracy in the numbers as you prepare a budget and, and sort of roll that forward into the future. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, 
Beth Ann, I wanted to um, mention right here, because we have a really good question about knowing your gross prof profit margin. Um, we had a question about how can a small business go about finding uh, their industry standard gross profit margin? Yeah, it's, you know, it's as easy as just go a Google search, you know, say, you know, what's the average profit margin in a, you know, retail restaurant uh, business? And, you know, you'll be able to find them very, very easily. Um, so just, just Google it. <laughs> Wonderful. Love Google University. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to move on to another um, area that's super important and that, you know, a, a lot of my coaching clients um, are, you know, struggling with this. So addressing sort of a lack of capital in, in your business. So you know, whether you're just starting out or whether you're growing your business, there are different ways to access capital. So I'm going to go through some of the, you know, the, 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 the main um, areas where you can uh, access capital. And again, it does depend on whether you're a startup or a growing business as to whether some of these might be appropriate for you. So the first one is, you know, pretty obvious bank loans or term loans. These would be loans that you would get maybe from your local bank or maybe from a larger bank. Um, I always, you know, recommend uh, to my clients, if you are seeking a bank loan, uh, to seek one from a community bank or a bank in your area that is friendly to small businesses. Um, you know, the bigger banks, uh, you know, they aren't, maybe as small business friendly. So, you know, try to, and we'll, we'll talk about uh, ways to sort of get yourself set up to, to do that. Um, lines of credit are another great um, way of, um, you know, getting some capital for your business. And this is where you want to, you know, ask for a line of credit when your business is doing well, not when you're losing money. Um, and so this is why, you know, it's a good idea to sort of, uh, you know, ask for a line of credit when maybe you don't, need the money yet, but you're sort of planning for the future. And along the lines of bank loans and lines of credit, um, I'm going to ask Brittany to put in the chat a couple of great articles that we have in the AOF uh, Digital Resource Library um, that uh, are really great in terms of sort of describing the differences between term loans and lines of credit and how they might be useful um, to your business. Um, the next thing is online lending, and I will give a shout out here to um, Axion Opportunity Fund. We also have a lending arm, and we provide um, loans for uh, businesses that have been in business at least a year. Um, but that, you know, so we're a great option if you are eligible for that, but there are lots of other online lending uh, platforms that have different eligibility requirements. Um, so if you ever have questions on those, you know, you're welcome to reach out to our coaching hub and um, to get some information on those. Um, the next thing is business credit cards. Um, certainly a way to sort of finance, you know, especially a startup business. Um, I don't recommend, you know, max out all your credit cards, um, but it is a way to, you know, finance um, beginning uh, businesses. Um, obviously, borrowing from yourself, personal, um, personal, uh, you know, resources or family resources or friends, um, you know, oftentimes that's the way a lot of people bootstrap their, their businesses starting out. Um, and then, you know, we can talk about uh, alternative funding options, and these can include, um, you know, angel investors, venture capitalists, um, some SBA loans, um, crowdfunding is an interesting one um, that can be great for a startup business. Um, and then CDFIs. So CDFIs are community development finance institutions. And these are um, lenders that are especially geared toward helping women-owned businesses, BIPOC businesses, um, people who, you know, might be um, in sort of underserved areas or, you know, might be less, let's say, bankable than um, other businesses. So these are all great options. And again, you know, our business, our coaching hub can, can help you, um, you know, sort of look at the different options. So Andrew, anything um, that you would add? 
Yeah, I, I uh, build on a couple of points there, Bethan. I think one, just to echo, right? I, I think it's easy to think that a lot of this falls on you, the individual, or sort of your closer network. But you know, there are people in, and institutions uh, available to help, right? To the community bank example, and that's where for them relationships are first, right? So it's going to be less transactional than some larger inst institutions in what they offer. Uh, and that's where these, you know, these institutions are in place really to help small businesses like each one of you are operating. And so the relationship works both ways where they help you and your business grow. And in turn, you're helping them grow at the same time. So that's really beneficial. And that's why, you know, it's helpful to sort of look at that as an avenue uh, when we come to uh, how do we address capital. And then on some of the uh, examples that Beth Ann covered. I think the one thing that we're really recognizing is there's a lot more options today than there has been in the past and, and newer social engagements as a way to, to fundraise or newer options to access capital. And so, you know, finding the right solution that works for you, the good news is there's a lot of opportunities out there. And I would just echo that spending the time to find what works best, uh, knowing that there's a lot of different ways to address capital and how what works for you in your business. Yeah, and one one additional um, source of capital that I will mention that I didn't put on here are because everyone asked me about it are grants. So everybody likes grants um, because it's basically free money. And there are grant opportunities out there. And I would encourage you to, you know, apply for the different grant opportunities. But, you know, just to be totally upfront, um, they're very competitive. Um, so I always encourage people to, um, you know, look at a, a variety of, of funding options um, with grants being one of them. So I don't want to discount them, but I just want to be very upfront that they are very competitive and, and can be tough to get. Everybody wants free money. <laughs> so um, it's good to look at these other options as well. All right. So the next thing, you know, we want to go over is, you know, how to how do you prepare yourself to be best placed to access capital? Um, so Andrew alluded a bit to this before, you know, um, I, and I'll go to the second one, actually establishing a relationship with a small business banker. Um, this is why I encourage people to um, set up your business banking with a community bank or a small business friendly bank within your town or your region and really start that right from the beginning. Again, always planning ahead, even if you don't need to access capital right away. Go ahead and, you know, when you establish that uh, business bank account, go in, introduce yourself, find out who um, handles uh, small business lending and really establish that relationship. It's uh, so important when you're a small business to do that. Um, the next thing you want to do is have a strong business plan. And again, every business should have a business plan, whether you're planning to um, access capital or ask for a loan, uh, a business plan is so important. It, it should serve as a roadmap for your business. Um, you should put together your business plan and constantly be going back to it um, and updating it. And, and again, use it as a roadmap. Um, the last thing you should do is write a business plan and stick it in the drawer and never look at it again. That's not what you want to do. Um, and again, this is something that um, the coaches at AOF can help you with, um, really putting together that strong business plan. Um, next, you want to improve your credit score. Um, and we'll go over that in a little bit more detail in, in the next slide. Um, and then finally, uh, as part of your business plan, you want to prepare um, good financial statements. So this gets back a little bit to um, the budgeting um, aspect of, of you know, getting your financial house in order. So you wanna prepare um, good financial statements. And Andrew, maybe you could speak a bit to some of the different financial statements that would be um, you know, important to have. Yeah, absolutely. I think the other thing to note here um, is some of the connectivity to our earlier points, right? So having a, a business plan in, in place, knowing your financials, so really, in order to access capital, um, the couple of things are where we started this meeting. That's most important. And so when it comes down to financial statements, 
there's, a, there's a handful of measures and metrics that we touched on already. So we, we spoke about cash flows, and I think that's where being able to produce you know, a roll forward of those cash flow statements, again, built around the operations of your business, as well as any potential financing that's already in place today. Um, having a view of your balance sheet, again, depending on the business that you're operating, potentially you have fixed assets um, that are part of your um, your business, as well as is an income statement. And again, we spoke to a little bit about sort of pluses and minuses and, and getting down to a gross operating margin, but really that, that income statement is gonna help you determine your revenues and your expenses, um, what are the sources of each and where are those expenses going towards to get you down to a profit margin. So that would be uh, a couple of the statements that would show up here in your financials. Perfect. All right, so a lot of people ask, you know, how do you improve your business credit score, um, especially when you're starting out? How do you even establish a business credit score? Um, so a couple of tips that we can give you to sort of get you started on the right track. So first and foremost, um, you should always open a business bank account for your business. You should always keep your personal and business uh, bank accounts separate, even if you're just a sole entrepreneur and you're, you know, a one one woman or one man's uh, shop. Um, make sure you always keep your um, personal and and business finances separate. So open that bank business bank account, and again not to hammer uh, on the point too much, but always you know, choose a, a good small business friendly bank or community bank. Um, next, you wanna pay your bills on time. This seems really obvious, but a lot of um, you know, business have businesses, especially when they're starting out um, because of cash flow problems, you know, they have a hard time you know, paying those bills, but this is something you wanna really make a priority. Make sure you negotiate good terms with your various vendors um, and, and get those bills paid on time. Um, a great tip for uh, you know, getting your credit score up is to apply for and use a business credit card. So don't use your personal credit card, get that business credit card and use it and pay off uh, the bills as much as you can. That's going to um, improve your credit scores. Um, something I just mentioned, you know, negotiate good credit terms from your vendors. You know, a lot of vendors are very, you know, um, understanding. If you're just starting out, they might be willing to give you a little bit more time to, to um, you know, pay your bills, but it's good to ask for that upfront as opposed to wait, waiting until you're in trouble and late on your payments. You know, be proactive about getting those good credit terms. Um, apply for a small loan. So again, getting back to a point I made before, you know, maybe you don't, you're not in a desperate situation for money, but you know, it's better to apply for a loan when your business is profitable and not sort of, you know, losing money money or, you know, going down the drain, you, you want to, you know, just apply for a small loan, pay it off. Um, again, that's going to, you know, help your credit score and help, um, you know, help you in the future when you might need a bigger loan. Mm -hmm. um, you want to read, always register with the business credit bureaus, get a DUNS number. This is very easy. Um, just Google DUNS. Um, you can get that, um, I believe it's free of charge, uh, very easy to do and very important to sort of establish, establish yourself as a credible official uh, business. Um, Andrew, anything you wanna add to, to that? Yeah, I, mean, I think it echoes a lot of, probably what a lot of us have experienced on the personal side. So I think number one is really knowing what your score is or, or if you're new, you know, at least having a starting point um, and then you know, staying on top of it's most important, right? And that really comes back to some of the discipline of, of paying bills on time, um, doing what you can to improve your terms. Because really, um, unfortunately, you know, being on the losing side of this is where it hurts most, right? And I know probably some of you have experienced that on the personal side of your lives. And so really for your business to be successful, you want to have your best foot forward when it comes to your credit score. That gives you the most flexibility. You'll get the best terms, that relationship will get that much stronger with your local community bank um, based on what you do there. So really taking the necessary steps um, to establish your score, know what it is, 
if there's anything that's called out there, address that as quickly as you can and take the right steps to improve the score and that'll pay off over time. Andrew, I think that's such an important point that you know a lot of these um, tips are not only relevant to small business owners, but also from a personal standpoint. So a lot of these things, you know, you you should do to, to improve your personal credit score too. So, you know, all of these things are are really relevant. So really good point on that end. All right, so next we have how to prepare for unexpected um, expenses. So we have all just been through basically two, let's argue three years of, you know, a, pand a global pandemic that was sort of the, the mother of all unexpected expenses. Um, and we have all been become experts in, you know, what not to do or what to do to, a, to, um, um, you know, prepare for the next emergency. I mean, I, I, I do, God forbid, we, we have to go through anything like that again, but um, we certainly have, you know, experienced um, something that, you know, will hopefully get us prepared for the next uh, even small emergency. So a couple things that, you know, you might want to think about doing um, to, to prepare for these unexpected uh, expenses. First is to, you know, as, as you can establish an emergency fund, just, you know, or you could call it like a rainy day fund. Um, just put aside some money that, you know, if, if something does happen that you can draw on that money um, if need be. Um, open a credit card that you would use just for emergencies. Again, you know, have the card that you use sort of for regular um, expenses and then maybe have that, again, that rainy day credit card that you could tap into if you did, um, you know, experience um, a shutdown or, you know, again, um, some kind of emergency. Apply for a business plan of credit. Again, this is the kind of thing that you want to do um, when your business is doing well or you are, um, you know, profitable. Get that line of credit established so that you can draw on it in in cases of emergency. Um, keep your warranties up to date. So this has to do if you have equipment uh, or anything. Make sure that all of those warranties, all of those things are up to date. So if anything happens to, um, you know, that equipment, you can you can make sure that you are covered. Um, there are lots of other things, Andrew. Uh, what can you add to this list that you, you could, there are lots of other things, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, I think I would um, focus on flexibility here, right? And I think to, to Beth Ann's examples, whether it's a credit card, a line of credit, a small loan, um, you know, really, if, if we've learned anything in the last couple of years, it's something's going to happen and potentially many things will happen uh, as we sort of go through our small business lives. So you're gonna to need to pull on these levers as time goes. So whatever you can do to be thoughtful and put just a little bit aside in a couple of different places. Um, again, being in a position where you have to react to an external circumstance um, isn't gonna be the best outcome. So whatever you can do to help get in front of that and utilize some of the um, tools that we've discussed here uh, is really gonna help you uh, manage through those situations and come out uh, ahead on the, on the other side. Yeah, I think that's that's so important. And, you know, it, it's hard when you're first starting a business to think about these things because, you know, you're so busy, you're just sort of going day to day, you know, keeping your business open, making sure you're growing, etc. But it really does um, behoove you to to think about these things um, in advance. And again, we can't have a better example than, you know, a global pandemic to to drive home that point that, you know, the the horrible things can happen and we need to be prepared. So, awesome. yeah, so I'll just ask Andrew, I mean, we've, we've talked about a lot of things, but, um, you know, I'd love to, to get your thoughts, Andrew, just some words of wisdom to get people started. We are, you know, in January still, well, last day of January, <laughs> um, how can people really hit the, ground running and and start off with a strong year yeah i'm i'm going to focus on taking action right you mentioned it is the beginning part of the year but really hope we've covered a lot of ground today 
Um, hopefully you're already thinking through a couple of those actions based on what we covered, and now it's time to go execute. Um, the other thing I would mention too is to the earlier part of this call, really there's a resource, whether it's this network, uh, network outside of small business owners that you lean on, folks around your communities, uh, there's people that are always willing to help offer their time, offer their perspective, and ensure that you're successful in whatever venture that you're focused on. Um, so just like Axion is, is an important learning partner here, um, having a network of small business owners that you can lean on for questions, for advice is, is so important. Um, but really now's the time for action and hopefully all of you have taken something away that you can go off and have a great 2023 and beyond with. Absolutely. Um, and I know um, Brittany is going to go over some of the, the resources that Axion Opportunity Fund has. Um, I strongly, strongly recommend that you um, take advantage of all the different things that we have to offer. I'm a business coach. I'm happy to talk to anybody, anybody about any of their business issues. And we've got uh, a rock star roster of business coaches in our coaching hub. So, you know, from all parts of the country, different industries, different um, expertises. And I, you know, there's so many different resources out there. Obviously, if you're on this webinar, you, you have tapped into at least some of them, but I encourage you to, um, you know, take advantage of all of those things. And as Andrew mentioned, also, you know, just people in your community, um, friends, fellow business owners, learn from people, lean on each other and, um, you know, uh, get as much expertise as you can. So I'll kick it back over to Brittany to. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Beth Ann. And thank you, Andrew. And we're going to jump into some questions. I've seen folks dropping questions in the chat. Um, but uh, as we get into these, if you don't have a question just yet, um, or haven't had a chance to drop it in the chat, feel free to do that now. Um, but if you don't have any questions, I would love to also hear, now that you've heard all this great information, what is your next step going to be? You know, how are you going to get your business financial house in order? Um, but uh, to jump into some of the questions, we had a question about credit scores. Where can a small business owner go to find their score? Um, and I will start with Beth Ann. So there are different ways. Maybe Andrew, you might be better suited to 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 take this question. You know, there are personal credit scores, there are business credit scores. Um, what would you suggest, Andrew? Yeah, I think some of the common services that are out there on the personal side, um, like an Experian, is probably one name I would mention. Where that's a tool that we, as individuals, use. They offer. They also offer small businesses the same process. Um, it's a free service. It's relatively easy to do. You fill out some basic information um, and they're able to run the score for you. So there's, that's probably a good follow-up point as well. Um, we can send out some helpful links um, to, to address that question too. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And then this is a um, great question here. Uh, as a small business owner, I'm afraid of carrying business debt. Um, but peers have mentioned that I should have some operating capital to help cover business expenses for an emergency. Is there a rule of thumb as far as how much money I should have set aside? Um, and Beth Ann, I'll start with you. Yeah, this is a really great question. You know, I, I get this question so often from my clients, um, you know, when they're looking for capital and, you know, they're only interested in getting a grant because they're scared of debt. Um, you know, there's, there's a reason, you know, people are scared of debt because they're afraid they won't be able to, you know, pay it back. But again, getting back to, you know, improving your credit score, preparing for emergencies, um, you know, you just want to make sure that you don't bite off more than you can chew. And this is where it's really important to have that relationship with your, your local banker, you know, to sit down, to look at your financial statements, to look at your cash flow, your revenues, your costs, everything 
everything um, and figure out, you know, how much debt you can take on um, to, uh, you know, and, and, and pay it back. Because the last thing you want to do is take on a loan that's that's too big. But I, I really encourage people not to be so scared of debt because um, as long as you, you know, you are taking out a loan that you can properly manage, then it's, it's going to be nothing but helpful to your business, um, not only for, um, you know, getting the capital that you need uh, for your business, but also setting you up for future um, asks for, for loans. You know, if you can pay off a small loan, then you're going to be better placed to, um, to acquire a larger loan uh, in the future. Um, Andrew, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, just about debt in general. Yeah, no, I'd agree. Um, you know, I think it's something that you shouldn't be afraid of. I think it's healthy. It's a healthy portion of every company's um, capital or balance sheet. So having some bit of debt is, is important. It's a tool that sits outside of um, sort of your typical financing options. So when you think of any company, whether it's a, a local small business or the largest Fortune 500 companies, they're constantly uh, adjusting their debt to capital ratio. Uh, and coming up with the right um, ratio that works for each one of them. So it's definitely an option that you should pursue um, when you think of your uh, how you want to manage your business and ultimately the the financials you'll need to be successful. Absolutely. Okay, we have a question that refers back to we we're talking about using technology and whatnot and inventory management. We had a question that was um, basically asking if there are any recommendations or thoughts on how a small business owner can manage their inventory. Any tech recommendations or program recommendations? Um, and I will start with you, Andrew. Yeah, I think Beth Ann mentioned uh, QuickBooks earlier on. So QuickBooks is a pretty comprehensive uh, technology solution. So when we talk about budgets or cash flow statements or financial statements more broadly, there's also inventory management that's a feature and an option there. Um, and I'm sure there's other sort of industry peers of QuickBooks that would have an inventory management solution as part of it. So through a little bit of research, um, you should be able to get um, find out some ideas of, of sort of what might work best for you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I don't have any off the top of my head that um, it really depends on what kind of business you're in, too, as to what kind of inventory management software is best for you. Um, so, you know, I would recommend, you know, again, <laughs> Google, uh, you know, best inventory management software for your particular business. Again, I think QuickBooks can can um, handle some inventory management, um, but there are you know, different kinds of inventory management software, depending on whether you have an online business or a brick and mortar business or a big warehouse, um, definitely, um, you know, do, do, do your research. Uh, there's not a one-stop shop for inventory management software. Makes perfect sense. And as we're asking questions, more questions are coming up um, and I'm responding in the chat as well. So, um, I want to have, I want to do one more question, but don't worry um, if, you know, this isn't your question. I am dropping resources below for you that include free coaching sessions. So you can get personalized advice. Um, but I think our last question to, today um, is around credit. And it says, if you've been turned down for a credit card because, because of your personal credit score, then what are some steps you can take in terms of kind of, you know, building up your credit um, and things like that. So what's the next step they can take? And I'll start with Beth Ann. Yeah, I think, you know, getting back to, you know, what you should do, um, you know, to improve your business credit score, a lot of those things apply to your personal credit score. So again, you know, maybe applying for a line of credit or, um, a, you know, um, a, a, uh, small loan, trying different credit cards. Um, there are credit cards, you know, that are, you know, more forgiving in terms of the personal credit scores. Um, you know, doing, again, making sure you pay your bills on time, you know, they, all of the things that you would do for, uh, you know, 
improving your business credit score are, are really similar to what you would do to improve your personal credit score. Um, Andrew, I don't know if you want to add anything. No, I think that's exactly right. You know, I'd, I'd want to understand why you were turned down. So make sure you're reaching out to that institution to understand the rationale there. Mm -hmm. um, definitely paying down any balances or debts that you have is going to help be helpful for that next opportunity. There might also be a different um, card or credit card that's out there in the marketplace that would be suitable for your needs. So just because you missed out on your first opportunity doesn't mean there might be might not be something else out there for you. Yeah, and I would say, you know, if you got a if you currently have a credit card with huge balances and high interest rates, um, you know, taking out uh, refinancing or taking out, you know, uh, a small loan to pay off those credit cards, you know, businesses will do that sometimes, um, you know, to pay off really high interest loans or, or things like that, you know, get get those balances down um, and get, you know, um, better interest rates uh and and just get rid of those you know really high balances some of the credit cards have just incredibly high interest rates that um you know you really want to take care of um as as quickly as you can wonderful thank you um beth ann and andrew for answering all of those questions we have mentioned this mentioned this earlier and i've absolutely been spamming you in the chat with all of our resources but please check them out. We have an amazing resource library, tons of our recorded webinars, um, and more personalized coaching, and even some educational programs as well that provide more in-depth um, opportunities for you and your business. Keep an eye out. Tomorrow, you will get all of these wonderful resources directly to your inbox, and we'll be sure to notify you of upcoming opportunities. Um, I want to take a moment to really thank everyone for coming today. If you get a chance when you leave, you'll get a pop-up that will give you a really quick survey. I promise it's like eight questions or less, and it is really, really quick. If you could take it and just let us know what you thought, it'll be super helpful for us as we continue to provide these resources. Thank you to our partner, Globe Atlantic. Thank you to Andrew Palin. Thank you to Beth Ann. Um, for coming today, and we wish you all the best in getting your finances in order this year. Have a wonderful day, everyone.